David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have a limited edition pen from the Japanese manufacturer Platinum. Uh, over the last couple of years, they have produced a limited edition model of their 3776 model based on the, uh, the five lakes surrounding Mount Fuji in Japan. Those lakes would be Motusu, Soji, Sai, Yamanaka, and the last lake is Kawaguchi. And that is the pen we are going to take a look at today. Uh, I'm going to go over the parts and the features of the pen and talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. To begin with, uh, in regard to Lake Kawaguchi, it is the second largest of the five lakes surrounding Mount Fuji in regard to uh, surface area. And it's also the most popular of the five lakes in regard to tourism. Uh, it's also the main hub for folks looking to ascend Mount Fuji during the climbing season. The pen arrives in this white box. Uh, on the front it says 3776 and then Kawaguchi. Uh, and then Kawaguchi in Japanese underneath. Uh, you know, I don't pretend to understand uh, much about Japanese, but I thought it was interesting that according to my uh, Google, Google Translate, uh, the symbol for Kawaguchi is uh, river and mouth. So Kawaguchi means the mouth of the river. The box inside is a nice white box. Uh, and then inside, uh, there is also the same insignia on top. And it's kind of a, a velvety material inside. Uh, and inside, we have a proprietary platinum ink cartridge. We have a, a warranty card. We have a, a user's manual that's in a couple of different languages. And then some uh, information about this pen, uh, which is the 3776 Century Kawaguchi. And this is what it looks like. Uh, Platinum calls this color dawn blue, and it represents the dawn when the sky is a, a deep blue right before the, uh, the sun comes up. And the pen is made of a semi-translucent resin. Uh, the Kawaguchi is the, the same size as Platinum's other 3776 models uh, and shares a number of parts with it. So let's start here at the cap. Uh, at the end of the cap is a special nut which has been affixed to the top of the cap ring which really symbolizes the silhouette of Mount Fuji at dawn. Uh, then we have a rhodium plated band and all the trim on the, pe the pen is rhodium plated. Uh, and then we have the standard platinum clip which is very functional and uh, does have a decent amount of, uh, of tension to it. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a limited edition of 2500 and opposite of the clip, uh, the number is engraved. This particular pen is number 2497 of 2500, so pretty much close to the end of the run. Then we have the cap band, which starts with a very thin band set apart from a larger band. Uh, at first glance, the band appears to be the same as most other, other 3776 models, but it's in fact a little bit different. Uh, typically, Platinum engraves their cap bands, but according to Platinum, this is the first pen of theirs which actually has raised lettering. Uh, there's actually a combination of raised lettering and engraving. Uh, the band actually says 3776 Century in the raised lettering, then it's engraved with Platinum, and then made in Japan. Uh, the end of the cap actually angles down to minimize the step down to the barrel, which is straight for about an inch and a half before tapering down to the end of the barrel where we have another thin band and then the end is rounded. The cap twists off to reveal this very nice 14K rhodium plated nib. Engraved on the nib, it has 3776, which is actually the height in meters of Mount Fuji, Japan's highest mountain. Uh, and then it has the Platinum P logo, then 14K M for this medium nib, and then 585 to represent the 58.5% gold contained in a 14 karat product. Uh, here are a couple of microscope shots of the nib. Uh, here's the uh, the heart breather hole, which you'll find on just about all Platinums. Uh, and then the, the zigzag design on the end of the nib, which I actually really like. I like how you can kind of see the nib creep in this picture with the ink filling in the engraving. Uh, sometimes having a bit of nib creep can kind of add a bit of character to a nib. And uh, then here's a look at the plastic feed. The section actually begins with a very small ridge and then slopes up very slightly, transitioning to a band, which is actually an extension of the, uh, the inner metal 
of the section. Uh, and then there are the threads, which I really don't find to be sharp at all, and then a small step up to the barrel. Um, the Kawaguchi, as with all 3776 lines, is not an overly heavy pen. Uh, the barrel is long enough to comfortably use unposted, but if you want to post the cap, uh, it does post very well and stays secure and really doesn't throw off the balance of this pen. Uh, and this is actually a pen I prefer to use posted to, in order to give it a little bit more weight, but it doesn't throw off the balance. This is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it takes a proprietary platinum cartridge and the pen also includes a, a Platinum Con 700 converter, which I guess is a little redundant to say since the Con in Con 700 stands for converter. So it's a bit like saying ATM machine. So um, I do like that the platinum matches the color of the metal on their converter to the trim of the pen. Um, the trim on the Kawaguchi is uh, is silver in color, and so is the converter. Um, just for example, here is a 3776 Century in chartreuse blue, and this pen has uh, gold covered accents, as you can see here, and the converter has gold on the end of it. So that's just a nice touch. So now let's talk about the most distinguishing feature of the Kawaguchi, which is the linear patterns that are present on both the barrel and the cap. I'm not quite sure if you could really pick it up here in the light, but the goal with this design was to portray the barrel of the pen as the lake surface with a quiet stream that is rippling from the fresh breeze. And the convex and concave patterns are meant to evoke the, the lake scenery being reflected like a mirror in the water. You know, I really like that there isn't a pattern in the wave. I like that it really varies. I also like that the, the wave on the cap is different than the wave on the barrel. Uh, you know, I like that it's not just duplicated. Uh, the lines are engraved in the resin, and it really gives you an interesting tactile experience. You know, I, I enjoy pens with distinctive features. Uh, you could pick this pen up and, with your eyes closed, instantly recognize uh, what it is by the feeling of the pattern. And I kind of like that. Um, with a pen with a screw cap, it's difficult to make the, uh, the cap airtight, so Platinum designed what they call the slip and seal mechanism. This is a design which they claim will keep a nib wet up to two years. So let's take a look at this, actually on my uh, 3776 Yamanaka, uh, just because it's a little easier to see. Now, I previously reviewed this Yamanaka, so if you'd like to learn more about it, uh, you can find the review on my channel. But you can see here in the cap that there is an inner cap. Uh, and that the what happens is the end of the section actually pushes pushes up against the inner cap. So when you put on the cap, you twist it shut and it feels normal. Uh, and then you receive a little bit of resistance over the last final quarter turn of the cap. And it's at this point that the section is pushing up against that inner cap. Uh, and then up against and then it's triggering this spring here at the top of the cap. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see that activate right there. It takes a little getting used to in order to make sure that you're always getting that final quarter turn to securely cap the pen, but I believe it works well. You know, I haven't left a 377 inked for two years to test it out, but I haven't had any issue with any of mine drying out. Uh, the Platinum Kawaguchi is available in fine, medium, and broad, uh, and the pen retails for $216, which is a bit more than the standard 3776 Century models like the uh, Chartreuse Blue, which uh, retail from around $150. You know, I would consider the Kawaguchi an upgrade from a standard 3776, so I feel that the added cost is warranted. Um, you know, it's well built, uh, and I really like the symbolism th uh, spread throughout the pen. And I'll discuss it more in the writing sample, but I really like the nib on this pen more than either of my other two 3776s. Um, it's definitely a, a pen worth picking up. So now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and then a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Platinum 3776 Kawaguchi. Uh, that in comparison to some of the other 3776 models, uh, this is what it looks like next to the Yamanaka. 
Uh, and then uh, this is what it looks like next to uh, just one of the Chartreuse Blue 3776 uh, pens. And then this is what it looks like next to a Platinum President. Then in regard to some other pens, we have a Sailor Pro Gear 2. Then we have a Pilot Vanishing Point. And then we have a Visconti Rembrandt that has a magnet in it and gets attracted to the other pens. So what we have here is the Platinum three seven seven six and this is the Kawaguchi this is a uh, medium 14k nib uh, it does write very much like a Western fine so it is a, uh, a Japanese medium and the ink that we're looking at today is Mont Blanc Leo Tolstoy. And this is what the ink looks like. That it's a, a, a nice blue. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Bung Box Omazaki. Uh, it's very similar to that. With some saturation, it does have a bit of sheen to it and a bit of pop, pop to it. Uh, here it is in comparison to uh, Compeki, uh, that it's a little darker than, Com than Compeki, but like I said, it does get a little bit of sheen to it. And this is what the bottle looks like. Um, you know, I, I like Mont Blanc's bottles. Uh, I like their larger bottles, but then even some of their smaller ones are uh, designed well as well. And so this is uh, an interesting one with Leo Tolstoy's signature on there. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, that this nib is considerably firmer than the other 3776s seven, six, seven, that I own, and, and I like that. Um, that's one of, you're not going to get tons of line variation out of here, but one of the things that I, I didn't care for as much on some of the other Platinum 3776s seven, seven, was the springiness of the nib. It's just not something that I particularly cared for. And this Kawaguchi is uh, a little more firm Again, you're not getting tons of line variation out of there, uh, but it's a little more on the firm side, and I, and I like it. I like it a lot. In regard to wetness, it's decently wet, and in regard to reverse writing, it's very good. And then in regard to some fast writing, There we go. And the feed has no problem in keeping up at all. So here we have the Platinum 3776 Kawaguchi, which is the last in the Lake series. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite Platinums and uh, that it's definitely worth something, or something that's worth checking out. So thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you later.